and uh, towards the end. So, so uh, like many she, she said, I have a blog uh, because I thought I would share all, um, well, what I've learned over my 15 years. Um, I didn't think it was much, and I was a bit like, oh, no one wants to listen to me, but I decided to do it anyway, so it's kind of like a portfolio. I, I share my photos as well. I'm not a very good photographer, but, you know, in it, I rather have, like, it's a good way to share them and show what I've done and where I've been and everything. And, and I have an Insta account as well, so you're more than welcome to follow that and read on the blog. Uh, I haven't updated a blog for about two weeks now um, because I've been quite busy. And also another thing on the blog is that I share my um, research into um, New Zealand. What, well, it has kind of moved two bits. It's like New Zealand um, wine industry, but then also overall international wine marketing. So uh, it's kind of a two-way blog. So yeah, so my agenda today, so it's different for a path. Uh, I thought that would be interesting because it's, it's all good and dandy to talk about it, but we, I mean, at the end of the day, we're uh, studying, trying to get a job. <laughs> then I'm going to talk about uh, market entry. And again, this is from a, very much like the international marketing angle, but then it kind of merges as well with international business. Cultural awareness, which I will spend quite a bit of time on because I have learned that this is actually crucial. And a lot of times people overlook this as well. Then obviously pitfalls because I've had those. <laughs> a campaign in Ghana that didn't have a single inquiry. Uh, I can tell you more about that later. And then uh, the floor is yours for questions. So yeah, so like many she, she said, my path is uh, quite uh, zigzaggy. Um, I chose to go to the US for my bachelor's. I've always been into, you know, traveling and everything. And marketing has actually been, uh, it was either becoming a, a singer, but since I can't sing, that one was out the window. And then it was between marketing and interior design. And then it fell on international marketing because I've always been interested in international, traveled a lot, you know, seeing new cultures, learning languages. It, 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 it's ever since, uh, I was a child, even, um, I rem well, I don't remember. My parents had told me that um, when I was a child, we were on a trip to Paris. Uh, I walked down Champs-Élysées and sang Frère Jacques in French, and the French people, they actually turned their heads. That was when I had a singing voice, which doesn't exist anymore. So, <laughs> so the, there are so many different paths to go into this. Obviously, the, the, the most logical ones are internships and graduate schemes, internships paid and unpaid. But then also you could try and get some kind of part-time role with some company to get, you know, some understanding, some, yeah, knowledge of how it works because it, it is, it, it takes a while to get your head around international marketing uh, because there are so many parts to it. Uh, but then also, because obviously internships and graduate schemes are, a lot with the large companies and and they sound really attractive and it's cool and very exciting but often and this is what a lot of applicants overlook are roles as a marketing executive or marketing assistant in SME because the bonus with those is you you actually get the opportunity to do a bit more work than you would do for these larger organizations you you learn more hands-on in those roles. So I would say do not overlook those opportunities because it, it actually for learning the business, learning international marketing, they are actually much, much better than these graduate schemes and internships because they usually go on in, around different uh, departments as well. So um, I'm going to start about market, talk about market entry. And it's, it would be kind of a case study of South Africa because in one of my roles, um, at that point I had worked in international marketing for about seven, eight years. And one of my main tasks was to 
entered the South African market. And I said, in that job, I was re responsible for Africa and South America. So it fell on my shoulders to do. Uh, luckily, I had a local contact, so which in hindsight was the best thing ever because she were, it was kind of a safety blanket. So I asked her, you know, I could ask her and use her knowledge and understanding. And that is far better than doing your desk research. Yes, it's great to Google everything. And there are so many different sources you can use. But having someone there on the ground who knows the culture, who knows the financial situation, the political situation, not to forget, is so, so valuable. And that relationship is really important to build on. <laughs> Actually, before everything with COVID happened, she sent me a message and said, oh, when are you coming down to South Africa? I haven't worked with her for now for a good number of years, I think since 2015. <laughs> so she's like, oh, I want to see you. Uh, but that proves that our relationship was not only professional, but we got along as people as well. And let's face it, in business, if you don't get along as people, that won't be a business relationship. Uh, I did a lot of due diligence to see if the, is there, you know, is it feasibility, if feasible, sorry, <laughs> to enter South Africa? Will there be enough ROI for the money that, you know, we were to invest? And once I had done that research, it was a case of building the strategy and the tactics. So, it was digital, social, print events, and the partnership. I then, a bit naively maybe, thought, no, it's only going to be digital and social media. They're so developed. They're so similar, you know, to Europe. No, no questions. That's that's going to be the strategy. I spoke with my contact, and she said, no, Katarina. Actually, <clears throat> something that is really popular are flyers that you give out at high schools and universities, and also mini perspectives because people want something tangible to see. And you will understand why I'm saying this later on when I go in a bit more uh, detail about how South, South Africans are. And so that was the eye opener for me because I thought, again, like I said, naively, that digital and social was the way forward. But then also another thing that was crucial was events. And during those events, I remember there were two events. I went to South Africa uh, about every six months. And I went there, I, I don't know which time it was, but I met with his dad and his daughter. And the daughter, she wanted to go to London because she wanted to become an actress in West End. And the dad, he was said, no, you know, you need to have a fallback plan. You need to have a real job, you know, so they, <laughs> <laughs> found a middle ground. So she was to do uh, early childhood education and then still try to become an actress at the same time. And I met them, sat down, spoke with them, one-to-one -one meeting. Uh, it was after I had had a presentation to a group of you know potential students and parents. Done with the trip, went back to London, went back to South Africa again, met with the dad and the daughter again. And then they decided that she would enroll with the institution that I work for. And this is actually a very good example because again, for South Africans, it's so important with these relationships and trust. They, it is crucial because in some countries it's not as important, but for them it is. And that proved to me and showed to me that actually, you know, what my local contacts had told me about the relationship it was confirmed. So going back, so then also what I had done was with the flyers, the digital and social and all the events, I had then tailored the, low, the messaging to be tailored to that market. So I then went back to my research and saw, okay, these people, what do they want? What are they looking for? And for example, uh, a lot of South Africans, they want to find value for money and see how it will benefit them. And sort of, they, they don't necessarily look for the cheapest product, but they want the product that gives them a bit more. So that was obvious to put in the messaging and to explain that. Then also another thing that I did was 
in all images, I had South African people, had local <clears throat> landmarks and nature and everything. So they could see that it was in South Africa. Because again, that makes them feel more at home. They trust you more. And, and a very good example that I saw uh, recently was uh, Triller. What they have done, Triller is huge in India. <clears throat> so what they have done in India is they've changed the interface on the app. So it feels like a lot of the Indian uh, websites and you know digital media that they have there. So again, it will re relate to, they will feel like home, so to speak. So again, the cultural awareness, and this is, I, it's not more important than the marketing research, but it's crucial, it's on par with it. The number one thing to think of straight away when you are considering going into a country is you are a guest in that country. Whatever you think or your views, the way you do business at home and everything, Leave that at home and do it the way they do it in, in country. And that is really hard to get your head around initially, but things will be so much easier if, if you follow that. And I, I will give a few examples where I have struggled with it and I've accepted it. <laughs> And also in a lot of these countries, like in the US and Europe, women and men are equal. We, it, it's not a, you know, if you have a meeting with a woman or a man, it doesn't matter. However, in a lot of these countries, women are at a dis disadvantage. I'm, I'm not going to beat around the bush about that one. And, but there is a way to get around it. I did it, you can do it. So it is, know your research, understand it, understand the culture, understand the business language. For example, if you're, you are to negotiate contract or what have you, you then make sure to know, okay, this is the normal percentage, let's say it's the commission. So you then make sure that you, they know that you know what the normal, you know, the, yeah, the normal percentage is. And then also be assertive and firm. Uh, and I'm not saying to be rude, be assertive, you can be assertive, but nice at the same time. Uh, so going over to Middle East, they are quite straight talking. Again, not a lot of political correctness. Again, leave the political correctness at home because forget about that. You, you can hear, I mean, <laughs> I had, this was in, yeah, it was the Middle East. I had someone say, oh, Katerina, you look bigger than usual. Well, have you gained weight? And I had just started weight training. <laughs> so, you know, and actually I had lost weight, but you know, and it's these things. Uh, and I knew it, so I just laughed and I said, no, no, I started weight training, no big deal. Uh, <clears throat> again, women, ha you have to dress modestly. You know, no tank tops, no shorts, nothing. It is, you know, skirt that goes below the knee, and a nice shirt, that is fine. And in some places you have to cover your head, but you know, if you say clothing, that's, that's how it is. And, and also in Middle East, you need to be a bit street smart. Um, I, I arrived in Abu Dhabi once. I had had a flight from India and I was tired. I had been in India for three and a half weeks and <laughs> I was really ready to go home and I had to be in UAE for about, I think it was a week or so. And I was just like, you know, I wasn't with it. And there was this guy who came up to me and he wanted to take my suitcase and help me. And I was like, this is a bit strange. No, 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 no. And, you know, I held onto the, the suitcase. And then the, my taxi driver that I, I had booked to come and pick me up, he said, oh, that was a good move because he, he would have, you know, taken your suitcase from you. So, and, and being street smart, it, it's across the board. You have to be that. And um, they're in the Middle East, they're quite big on social media and digital, but they, again, they want to have print, they have something tangible to take home. So again, it is a mix of old and new, if, if that makes sense. And an interesting 
fact is that they like to see Westerners. This goes against the whole <laughs> localization. They, they like to see Westerners, but then again, you need to have, for women, they need to be modestly dressed. Men, they have to have a nice pair of pants and a shirt or a sweater or what have you. So it's, again, keeping the culture in the back of your mind with whatever you do. We're going, moving on to West Africa. West Africa is a very interesting, very exciting area. It's, uh, you learn a lot. Again, uh, you cannot apply the same strategy in all of West Africa because the countries are very different. For example, Cameroon, they have their French influence. You have Nigeria that is standalone. And then you have Ghana, which has a lot of European influence as well. So they are quite different, even though it's so, sort of the same area. But they do have a few things in common. Again, they are not politically correct. They're very blunt. I find this refreshing, but then again, being a Swede, we are very straight talking and we can be perceived as blunt. But to me, that's not an issue. But for other people, it could be. And then also, and this goes again, along the lines with the political correctness. Uh, my first time in Nigeria, I, someone said, yeah, you white. I was, what? That's really, you know, you don't say that. But to them saying you white and us black, that's describing something. There is nothing malicious at all. It is like describing the color of a house. And that is really important to keep in mind. And again, it took me a while to get my head around it, but it's, it's nothing bad at all. They're comp it is just describing it. So a lot of these countries, they, they go against this whole political correctness that we have here in Europe. And, oh, you're not supposed to say this, you're not supposed to say that. They just say it. And there is nothing bad about it. Um, so, going to Nigeria, um, Nigerians are so entrepreneurial, I am baffled. I've, I've been amazed every time. Uh, I remember one time I was in a cab going to a meeting and there was this guy, he had a socket and like a whole extension cord with different sockets in and he had cell phone chargers there for all the different brands. So, and then he had, he was then next to a bar. So you could charge your phone and have a beer while the phone was charging. That, that's just amazing. That, how, how can you even come up with something? But that is because they need so many things there. So they, they just come up with these ideas and the entrepreneurship just flows around. Um, but again, they are very direct. I have been asked so many times if I'm married, if I have kids, you know, what my husband does. I said, and, you know, I, I'm, when I made the mistake initially to say I wasn't married, I didn't have kids, and that, that, that's a whole other story. Resulted in five proposals, but that's, that's another story. <laughs> and, and again, you, you have to be firm, but not rude, because otherwise they will walk all over you. They will. They, they're sweet people, but they take their chances. Um, personal relationship is very much a status symbol with you because you're from a different country and you're there to do business. So they think, oh, this is great. You know, having this person that can say, oh, I have, you know, blah, blah, blah from London, you know, visiting. I have <laughs> attended uh, one of my local representatives' child's sports day in 45 degrees heat. I did that simply because I knew it would result in more revenue for the institution I work for. Uh, I have had a TV interview, which I reluctantly agreed to because I don't like, I, I'm not the person to be on TV, I, I didn't want to. But again, it was to be like, oh, this person sh here, she's working with me, she's from London, you know, it, it, it's, it's a status really. Um, one thing you need to do is to forget any timekeeping. And this is one of the hardest things. And 15 years in international marketing, I still haven't accepted it and I probably never will. Because being a Swede, 
if you have a meeting at one o'clock, it is one o'clock. It's not 155, it's not 105, it's one o'clock. That's it. I, during one meeting, I had to wait an hour and a half for these people. <laughs> I, I was like, that was one of the hardest things I have had to do. Never mind everything else, but just accepting that because it goes against everything. Had it been a meeting here in London, after 15 minutes, I would have left. And oh, the hard, one hard thing is they could say yes, but actually mean no, because they don't want to be rude. And it's more not rude, it's more like being uh, dis disappointed you really. So you need to dig deeper as to why they're a bit hesitant, why they're not um, saying yes straight away. They, they can give a vague answer, they can, you know, beat around the bush and be like, mm, yeah, possibly now, mm, maybe. So that is for you to dig deeper and find out. But, and also another very practical thing, for, when you do presentations, download it on the computer because the electricity goes out several times a day and the generators might not start up again and you can't assume that you have internet. Um, and oh, the same goes with mobile phones. When I was there the first time, I had a meeting with someone who had three mobile phones. And I thought, this is odd. But the, it's actually practical because, again, the mobile phone network goes down throughout the day. So if, if they can't reach you on one phone, they'll reach you on the other phone or the third phone. So let's get over to Brazil. So again, it's very similar as to, the, to um, South Africa with it's crucial to build relationship. It takes time. It was, took me three trips to Brazil before I could even have any business agreement with a potential uh, with a partner, and that is because they they want to build that relationship. They want to get to know you. For example, they don't like to have Zoom calls. Well, they probably have been forced now with the current state of affairs, but you know they don't want they don't like emails at all. If you're going to have to call them and you're in a different country, you pick up the phone and call them and say, hey, you know, I sent you an email about X, Y, Z. What do you think? And they, they will speak with you, no problem at all. But it's just they want that in person. And then when you go to business meeting, you go, don't go straight into talking business. No, 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 no. You talk about the family because family is very important there. You ask about the husband, the wife, the kids, the parents, you name it. You sit there and have this moment. Then you talk business. And again, the timekeeping was also an issue there. I don't know why I have been in countries where the timekeeping is an issue and I'm so anal about time, but hey, that, that, that's how it is. Um, and also, because in the US and in Europe, it, you know, you have business casual and that's the norm. While there it's very formal. So even if you have an informal meeting, you dress up. You come in full business attire and do whatever you need to do. And one practical aspect in, in, with Brazil is that 5% of the population speaks English. So it's very good to have a translator. And <clears throat> the people who know English, they, they might understand it, but they prefer <clears throat> sorry, to, to ask you questions in Portuguese and you, you, you have translators translated. Same as translate all marketing material to the local language. That is so important because again, it's the whole to understand what you are saying to be understood. It's, it's basically a safety blanket for them. So I touched upon South Africa uh, before. And like I said, trust is very important. And why they are <clears throat> cautious about their money is they have, I mean, their financial situation is up and down all the time and their political situation is a bit unstable. So that's why they're very, very careful with their money. It doesn't say that they, they want to go for the cheapest. No, they, and like I said, they want more value for the money. They, they, want, to, they want to know why they should choose your product or service over a competitor's 
and how that would benefit them. And to, to understand that, you need to do proper research and you know, really dig into what the potential you know, target audience are looking at, what, they, what makes them tick, you know, what they value, uh, you know, financial situation, uh, professional situation, education, educational level, all of that you need to look into because then also that will help with the messaging to tell them. So you can say, no, you need to choose our product because X, Y, Z. So last time to go to is India and <laughs> um, they can be perceived as very pushy, uh, which is untrue. They're very keen. <laughs> That's what I would say. They're very keen and enthusiastic. Uh, but again, for a Swede who loves a lot of personal space, like the social distancing we have right now, I love it because we don't like people close by. And this was something I needed to get my head around in India <laughs> because I, when I first went there, People said, you need to have the desk between you and the people you speak with. And I was like, no, I can't do that at an event. You know, I want to stand there and talk to them normally. No, you have to have the desk because otherwise you will be bombarded. I said, no, 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 I don't believe you. I, I tried for about half an hour. I went behind the desk because people, I stood there talking and then I moved back because they were too close and they moved, <laughs> moved towards me again. And I moved and it was like that. <laughs> and again, that was... A real <laughs> to me it was a bit oh you're a bit too close you know but you know hey it's the way they are and you just accept it and they from my experience they they want to have a good deal again like south africans value for money if you can have if they can have a discount they'll happily take take it and they also prefer formal titles, which for me, because I'm the last one to use titles, I, I find titles very um, cumbersome and very stuffy. So being called Miss Katerina or ma'am, I just thought, who are you talking to? You know, that's not me. <laughs> but, you know, again, you accept it and you go with the flow. It, it's a lot going with the flow in international marketing in these countries. Again, the yes but no principle applies in India. They don't want to disappoint you, which I think is so sweet. It's really, really endearing. So again, if they don't agree with what you're saying, they say could say yes, but you know, why don't we do it this way or that way, or we'll try. So it, it's again, it's important to understand these communication, uh, the indirect and direct communication, because they say a lot without saying anything, if that makes sense. And, and once you get a, your head around that, then, then it's a lot easier. So, but again, these are things you learn when you're in the country because you can have all the book knowledge in the world without being exposed to it. It's really, really hard to apply it and you know, see the pitfalls and everything. So when, as I was mentioning pitfalls, <laughs> I thought this would actually be a, a good opportunity because I, I'd like to share, you know, a few of the pitfalls I've had just so you avoid having them. <laughs> it's enough with one person making them. So uh, one of the crucial things is not applying the foundation for marketing. I know you haven't covered, uh, you just touched upon them a bit, so I'm not going to go into detail, but you will understand them when you go, go over that again. The four Ps or seven or eight Ps, I, I don't know which number they're at at the moment. Um, swap and pestle analysis, competitor and pricing analysis. These are crucial to have in detail, understand, know inside out. Uh, because if you don't know what the strengths or weaknesses and the potential opportunities in the country are, how will you be able to market? How will you benefit or take advantage of those? Same. How, how will you know that your product is at the right price, the right promotion to use, the right place to promote them? And you need to understand what the competitors are doing because the competitors, they might you know, have a much lower price, but they you know, give you, I don't know, a unicorn along, a unicorn along with a cell phone or whatever. And obviously the price. 
And this is really important. And this is something you need to do on an ongoing basis. Assuming that the same works everywhere. And that is easily done because in the US and in Europe, we're all about you know, social and digital and that. But as you heard, print works in a lot of countries still. A good old fashioned ad in a newspaper works in, for example, West Africa, in South Africa as well. And it's so easy for us to forget these because to us, they're dead. You know, if we have a, if we subscribe to a newspaper, we have it on our iPad or on our iPhone, but they actually go and buy the, the newspaper. Avoid localization. <laughs> this is so, so important. And it goes for everything you do, the marketing activities, the different marketing assets so you put the right people there but the right background you know use you know colors that are very common in to be used in you know advertising and marketing in that country not tailoring the messaging so the people can relate to that and understand what you're saying and especially now as well because because of covid the customers they have changed so much and I've been in so many conferences and all marketers, we're kind of wrecking our brain at the moment because the, the customer today has changed so much. So have they in these countries. So this information has to be updated all the time. Avoiding translating into the local language. This is so easy to do because you can hire someone locally who will translate it and no problem but this is so important because again it is relating being able to see oh this product service speaks to me i can you know i understand it, it, it's one more tick box and like i mentioned with the communication style if it is direct or indirect and building those relationships because without all of this you you will fail you will fail i mean i i this was i made this rookie mistake it was in the beginning of my career i had an ad a placement ad in, in a newspaper in ghana uh, and it was for uh, the educational institution i worked at here in london and i thought it was great i had done the messaging i had done everything as i should i was proud of the ad and everything what i had forgotten to do was to research the local holidays. And the weekend where I decided to place this ad was a weekend where there was a big nationwide, uh, national holiday, sorry. So people didn't care about the newspaper. They were in their summer house with friends or family. And I had even allocated an email address. I had the phone number to my partner in Ghana. Not a single inquiry just because I didn't check the holidays. It is that you need to go into that detail. Trust me, I have never not checked a holiday <laughs> since that error. So it taught me that, it, you know, but there are so many bits that you have to keep adding to this. And then this goes kind of hand in hand with my last point, fail to adjust to the foreign culture. Bring it in the way you do think because you, that's how you do it and that's the only way. No, adjusting to the culture and country you're in, that's how you do it. So again, this is my blog, uh, my Instagram, and you're more than welcome to uh, add me on LinkedIn if you want to. Uh, Manisha, she has this presentation so she can give you that information as well. So lastly, I would say thank you for listening and it's over to you now with the questions.